Hiya. A few weeks back I took time out and started modelling some NPC characters, but I didn't actually do any AI for them. With the dungeon largely complete, it's time to start populating it. I've been looking into my options. Yui's got a few weapons, the most documented is the behaviour tree stuff, which coupled with environmental queries, abilities and effects is supposed to cover most bases, but it's not exactly well documented. I know the concepts around behaviour trees and I have played with Yui's implementation in the past, so I have been quite keen to jump into it this month. And obviously a Zelda game doesn't require the most robust AI in the world, at least not for the majority of the NPCs, so I wasn't expecting to have any kind of problem. I started building a little rat and actually found myself struggling more than I was comfortable with. The first problem is down to just the number of files involved. Behaviour trees generate a lot of tasks. The tasks are all individual blueprints. Even for something as simple as my rat, I had five tasks before any you know, real decision making. The tree itself grows quite quickly and surprisingly I actually found this quite hard to debug. What's on screen at the minute is fine, but it does nothing. Um, I added in perception so the rats could avoid each other and it got quite wide and quite deep and it was actually hard to get an overview. Um, when a decision went wrong, was it the decorator, dodgy blackboard value, or was it the task that was failing? And not being funny, I was kind of put out that I couldn't make something so basic, you know, quickly. So yeah, I don't really like the cognitive overhead from the presentation and loads of files. That lack of locality to the logic's a bit of an issue for me. My previous games have been simpler. Um, I've mainly used finite state machines. These are fine, easy to understand, um, but they lead me into specific programming patterns and I end up repeating a lot of stuff, so, I started looking around for alternatives. There are a lot of good looking plugins on the marketplace and there's a few that are quite attractive but I want something that I can engineer and maintain myself because I want to open up the project at some point. So after a bit of digging I stumbled across Utility AI. Now there's a Wikipedia page that can lead you to some interesting talks from GDC and I recommend you have a look at them but the concept is quite simple. An NPC has a list of possible actions, for example move, idle, chase player. The AI system polls each action and asks it to calculate its current utility value, i.e. what's its score, and it uses this score to determine what is the best action. So using those three examples, if the player isn't close to the NPC, then Chase can return a zero. Idle might not have happened for a while, so it might return a three. But as there's a valid place to move to and there's no impediment, move returns a seven. The AI system sees that move is the highest value score, enters it, starts the action and move tells the character controller where to go to and kicks it off. Now things can just maintain like this for a while, the player still can't be seen, idle's not important, so move just continues doing what it's doing. But at some point the player might enter range, at which point chase can start returning an 8, a 9 or a 10. The AI system would tell move to exit and clean itself up and then enter chase. Now admittedly that's a trivial example. Um, but you could already see that there's a bit of nuance to what utility value, i.e. what score actions should return. But for me that's a really simple lever to adjust, it's just one number. So I implemented this by wrapping AI controller, creating a utility AI actor component and an AI action base class. The utility AI component is added to the character. It has a list of AI action class references which it instantiates after begin play and adds to its just internal bucket list. Every tick the component polls the list looking for the highest score in action. There's a bit of structure in the AI action itself for entering, exit, tick and reset, but usefully it's all in one file. Um, one oddity I did have was due to AI action inheriting from U object, which meant that derived blueprints just weren't able to use anything in blueprint function libraries or most of the other blueprint nodes, and it took me a good few days to work out why. In the end this is just down to world context and specifically not overriding get world, but once that's in place the AI actions can raycast, they can use environmental query systems, they can play anim montages, everything a normal actor can do. I've been kicking the tires of this over the last couple of weeks and I'm pretty happy with it. It's easy to make small and discrete actions, I've not struggled to keep the state tracking isolated and to a minimum. I've given each action a gameplay tag which is passed back up to the AI system when an action's entered and this has been enough to allow other actions to infer what's going on. They can just check the tag, i.e. are we idling at the minute? Um, so there's this nice decoupling from using that. If something does need to be shared, I've kept with a blackboard system. There's one attached to every NPC which all of the AI actions have access to. I've added a smidge of on-screen debug, mainly because I like that sort of thing, but it's been surprisingly useful to spot issues during play, and it is still all tied up to the visual logger. This probably isn't for everyone, but I've got to be honest, it actually fits in my head really well. There's hardly any code involved, 
Um, what is there that drives the behaviors all in one kind of AI action blueprint? And it's made the whole thing a lot easier for me to conceptualize. Creating tests to return a utility score is straightforward. It's stuff that we do all the time. Um, and it's made the whole thing really fast to experiment with and easier to debug. So I'm pretty confident I can actually do everything I need for a while um, with this system. It's been a fun technical detour. Now, obviously, I've given a really quick overview here, but if you're interested in utility AI, then do check out those videos from GDC. The implementation differs a little, but it's all really useful information. I've been using bits and bobs of it as I've been going through. Um, I've also written up a load of my thoughts while experimenting on my dev blog, so you might also find that interesting. Um, and lastly, I've finally pulled the trigger on the Steam page, so if you haven't added it already, please add Venia to your wishlist.